There we go. Um, so thank you very much, Sarah, for wrapping things up with the first part of, of our program. And now we are gonna be moving on to the advocacy training workshop um, that is being run by um, our friend and colleague, Catherine Lang of Mass, um, Mass Rivers Alliance. Um, Catherine is the policy specialist and with Mass Rivers Alliance, and she's gonna be providing us with a refresher of the legislative process and our roles as advocates. Um, so uh, Catherine, I'll be turning it over to you so you can talk to us about tips for talking with our legislators. Catherine, you're muted, unfortunately. Here we go, we're live, live and local. <laughs> thanks, Wendy, and thanks, Sarah. Um, that was a great opening session. I was watching the whole thing and I especially loved everything that Senator Feeney said. I had heard that story about his well, but to see him really understand all the issues that we're talking about, especially on dam removals, is something that's so special. And um, yeah, the fact that he put out his, his phone number and his email, I made sure I jotted that down so we can follow mm -hmm. up with him because his support is, is so helpful and Senator Sear as well. So yeah, that was a great session. So um, as Wendy said, I'm Catherine. I'm the policy specialist for Mass Rivers Alliance calling in today from Cambridge. If you're not familiar with Mass Rivers, we are a statewide nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting and restoring the rivers and streams of the Commonwealth. So very similar to the mission of many of your organizations that I heard this morning. Um, we work in advocacy, which is why I'm here, but we also offer technical assistance and uh, community strengthening through peer-to-peer -peer learning. We have 80 member groups across the state, many of whom are in this room and have been involved in Mass Rivers for a long time. And we're really grateful for those uh, relationships and all of the work that folks have put in on all kinds of issues over the years. Um, so today I thought I would go over a couple of uh, tips on when you're preparing to speak with your legislator. And then I do have some content on the drought bill and the state budget, since those are two priorities that are really important to Mass Rivers. I know that all of you probably already have that information through the fact sheets that Wendy has shared in your own research. So that's optional stuff at the end, but I, I can talk about that if folks are interested. And I know that since you've signed up today, you already know why it's important to advocate. And certainly that was reiterated by Senator Feeney and Senator Sear this morning. Um, I think all should be really vocal in our needs and the uh, challenges we face in our watersheds. Um, as a statewide organization, we provide an overview of how the environment and waters are doing across the state, but to have your local perspective and your stories, your anecdotes, your photos, your local data and expertise to fill in the gaps is incredibly helpful. Um, sometimes it can be the thing that brings the legislator over the line to get into the fold of the issue and to make them understand that they too have skin in the game for these issues, whether it's drought or, or anything related to rivers, sometimes it's easy for them to think of those things as happening somewhere else. But then when you come in and share that you too are seeing those issues in your watershed, um, it reminds them that they need to be involved and engaged on these issues. The advocacy you're doing will help pass legislation that will protect rivers or at least hopefully that's what we're all here to do. Uh, your meetings strengthen the connections you might already have with those offices or help you form new relationships with new staff or new legislators. And overall events like these demonstrate the power and the passion of our environmental community. Um, just to reiterate that what you're doing today is one of the most impactful ways to get involved in the advocacy process. This graph is from 2010, but I think it still holds true today in 2022. Uh, the most influential way to potentially sway a legislator on an issue mm -hmm. is to have an in-person visit from their constituents. And I know we're doing virtual meetings, but 2022, that's the same thing. At least that's how I'm measuring it. Um, so you are engaging in the most impactful way to sway a legislator on an issues that are really important to us. 
Some of you might have meetings set up with your legislators uh, themselves. Some other folks might have them set up just with staff, but as Senator Sear reminded us this morning, sometimes legislator schedules are quite chaotic. They may intend to meet with you, but have to show up late. They might need to leave early. They might need to forego your meeting altogether, and then you'll be meeting with one of their staff members. While having them not show up to your meeting can be disappointing, um, certainly meeting with their staff is also very useful. The staff in their office are typically the ones who are doing the research on a bill. They are compiling um, public comments on bills for the legislator so that that legislator has a pack of information about the issue. So making sure that you know the staff, that they have your contact information um, is really helpful for you to stay updated on the bill's progress, especially because the staff are more likely to respond to your emails or calls uh, more so than the legislator might be. Before your meetings, whether they are today or next week or any time, uh, we're gonna apply the lessons we've learned in Zoom world to make sure your Zoom background looks okay and there's nothing embarrassing in the background. Um, but also you should do some research on who you're meeting with. Uh, their legislator page on the State House website will have the district, the outline of the district on the map, because although they may represent your watershed, that might be just one part of their total constituency. So it's helpful to know where they're coming from and the context of everyone that they have to represent, including your organization. You can see what committees they're on. If they have any titles, you might want to know that in advance, you can address them as chair or vice chair or whatever title they may have. Um, and then if you can find a recent success that they've had, whether on that page or maybe through their own social media, going through recent news articles, um, it, you might not always be able to find one that applies to your work, but if you can start off the meeting thanking them for something that they've done, it's a great tone setter for the rest of the conversation and shows that you uh, have understood their work and things that they have been doing. And finally, they might ask you any opposition that exists to whatever issue or bill you're bringing up. So it's helpful to think about that in advance so you can address whatever points are out there and counter them. Um, before the meeting, if you are trying to assemble your talking points, you don't have to recreate the wheel. If you have old testimony, old fact sheets, even blog posts, maybe your organization has put out, revisiting that content can be helpful. Um, so you don't have to write a whole new thing to bring into the meeting. You probably already have materials or perhaps your uh, peer organizations have those materials that you can bring into the meeting. Um, and this is a picture of me testifying on the drought bill. So just bring it home. <laughs> uh, during the meeting, as I think Senator Feeney mentioned, your local perspective is incredibly helpful. So anytime you can tie it back to, to the district, um, will really drive the point home for them. And if you can bring up your ask, especially at the beginning of your conversation, since as mentioned, the legislator might need to leave early or they might get a call or need to dip. If you can bring your ask up towards the beginning of your conversation, um, that lets them know what exactly we are asking them to do on this issue. So if we've looked in advance and we know that the legislator is on, for example, the Committee on Ways and Means, that's where many of our bills are now, including the drought bill, um, we can ask them to make sure the bill is reported out favorably from that committee. A lot of work to do to help us with this issue. We can ask them to urge their colleagues who are on the relevant committee to report the bill out favorably. Crucially, if they ask you something and you don't know the answer, we can always say that we'll get back to them. There's no shame in not knowing, not going to make something up. Uh, but the important thing is that we do indeed get back to them later with that information, maybe the next day after we've done some research. If the meeting's going well, you can always ask to take a screenshot. Um, I have a Mac computer and the keyboard shortcut is command shift five all at once. The box comes up and you have that option to take a quick screenshot. Um, it can be a great record for your organization to remember that conversation. Also helpful to post on social media afterwards. If, you, if your organization has a social media page, 
You can tag the legislator and thank them for their time, thank them for their support if it's applicable. Um, it helps keep them accountable and also shows your membership that your organization is actively working on these issues um, just to drive home what you're doing. And if you also, if you post that, we might like it and retweet it from Mass Rivers. So love that content. <laughs> um, after that fun stuff, we have to send the legislator and their staff a thank you email. Thanking them for the, reiterating the ask in writing over email, what we would like them to do on the issue. So it's just crystal clear. Uh, making sure that we CC their staff, even if the staff weren't at the meeting, it, you can still bring them into the loop in case the legislator's inbox is overflowing. Uh, making sure the staff have access to that too is a good uh, defense. In that email, we can attach any additional information. So fact sheets, photos, graphs, um, you might want to send those in to their office before the meeting so they have them to reference, but always good to send them again afterwards just so that they're at the top of the inbox. Um, and sending this email also makes sure that their office has the most up-to-date contact information for your organization. So you might wanna share, of course, your own email or phone number, but also if you have other folks in your office who have relevant expertise um, to share their contact as well so that there's just a free flow of communication. Right now in March, we are slightly over the halfway mark for the legislative cycle. Uh, that's two years. This past February, com uh, committees reported out all the bills that will advance this session. So for many of us, we were looking at the Joint Committee on Environment, Natural Resources and Agriculture, the ENRA Committee. Um, others might have been looking at the Telecommunications Committee or the Municipalities Committee, um, but across the board, all of those committees reported out a subset of their bills. Um, some of those bills, unfortunately, did not make it on. So we will revisit advocacy for those issues come next January. But for those that were lucky enough to move on the process, many of them have gone on to another committee. So the committees on Ways and Means, both the Senate and the House, um, the bills have to get voted on in those committees before going to the full chambers for a vote and then repeat the process in the other chamber, the House or the Senate, before finally going to the governor. All of that has to happen before July 31st. That's the end of the session. If our bills do not cross all those hurdles by then, uh, next January, we can start the whole thing over again, recharge and refreshed. Um, but we have a, a lot of work to do between now and the end of July. And I'll note for that for the bills that did make it out of committee in February or maybe earlier if they were lucky enough to have that timeline. Um, that only happened because of advocacy from organizations and individuals, from folks writing in testimony at public hearings, speaking at the public hearings, nudging and nagging the legislators that these issues are really important and deserve to be voted on, deserve to move on in the process. So um, I know a lot of you sent in those letters, posted on social media, activated your membership to get some of these bills out of committee in February. And we are so grateful for all of the work that you've done on that. It really does make a difference and has allowed us to have this opportunity today to keep advocating on these issues. So for example, the drought bill um, was one that was reported out of the ENRA committee in February. The drought bill has been filed for a number of sessions, but this is the first year that it was reported out of ENRA. So a pretty big milestone that we are excited about. And again, that was in due, that was due in large part to the advocacy done by individuals and organizations across the state. That bill now is in the Senate Committee on Ways and Means. And I'll note that uh, there's a bit of a, a footnote on this bill. There's two main sponsors, one in the House and the Senate. Um, in the Senate, we have Senator Jamie Eldridge, who's from the Acton area. In the House, we have Representative Carolyn Dykema, who was chair of ENRA. She has recently stepped out of her position. She's left the State House to go pursue work in the solar industry. So without that lead sponsor in the House, we are working hard to find another representative who has space in their agenda, who understands the issue and can be a real champion for the bill in the House. So while we are 
looking for that. We have a couple of, of ideas floating around and I will update you on when we have progress on that. Uh, we can work on the Senate. And luckily we have a real champion for water and the environment in Senator Eldridge. And he's committed to elevating this bill to be a priority in that committee. But um, certainly we can contact all of our senators whether they're on the Ways and Means Committee or not to advance this bill in the process. And like I mentioned, the end of July is the deadline for this bill. And that's a deadline that we are all eyeing right now. Um, that was the end of my process part. Um, does anyone have any, any questions there? I have some stuff on the bill and the budget, but um, I think probably a lot of you know that stuff already. Eve, I see your hand. Thanks so much, Catherine. This is awesome. Um, sure. Am I remembering right from the Tuesday call that one of the people you're thinking might be that role uh, for the House is Mindy Dom? That's correct. Yeah, I I don't know if she has the bandwidth, the bandwidth right now to take that on, but I, I have approached her, but I don't know. Uh, I haven't had gotten a confirmation yet. It, uh, so let's talk because that might be something that, you know, UMass students could talk to her about since she's our local rep. That would be great. Definitely. Catherine, I just wanted to chime in here for a second. Um, we're we're very lucky to uh, to have several people here in the audience that um, have a great deal of experience and expertise in advocacy. Um, several of our Watershed Action Alliance members are here. Um, Samantha Woods from North and South Rivers Watershed Association, um, Carrie Snyder and Ian Cook from the Neponset River Watershed Association. Um, Pine Dubois from Jones River Watershed Association, um, Heather, uh, Heather from, uh, excuse me, Heather Rockwell from the Barnstable Clean Water, um, and Topher Hamlet um, from Save the Bay. Um, I know that a lot of, oh, and, and Don Williams also uh, from the Herring Pond Watershed Association is here. Um, but I know that a lot of, of these members of the Watershed Action Alliance have participated in um, Lobby Day and several of the advocacy training opportunities through the Mass Rivers Alliance. So I'm hoping that maybe, um, maybe these people would be willing to share some of their success stories and some of their expertise for um, how they have um, implemented some of these wonderful things that you shared with us today. I don't know if any of you guys want to chime in, um, <laughs> or maybe we I want can, to wait for I can chime in. questions from the from the audience. I can share a little story if you want, Wendy. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, so uh, just to, let's see, it was in 2020 that our funding for the North River Commission was lost through the state uh, budget and um, we were successful in mobilizing um, to uh, get it back into the, but not back into the state budget, but at least earmarked um, in the last year too. And it was really through a petition um, that um, along with just raising general awareness and then reaching out to our uh, Senator O'Connor actually, who's our local Senator um, and, um, and so advocacy does work, <laughs> um, it, it does. And it particularly works if you engage more people in your efforts so that the, the legislator understands that, you're, um, that your membership is, and that your audience, doesn't even have to be your members, but that your audience is large. We had over 2,500 people sign our petition um, to get the money back uh, for this uh, that was lost now. Yeah, that being said, I would say, uh, you know, when we have crises like that, it's sometimes easier to galvanize people <laughs> uh, to to your right. cause. But when, um, and so it's a little bit harder when you're just doing your sort of everyday advocacy of like, save the river, come on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but I think it's important to, um, I feel really great about what we're doing as a sort of a regional group to bring these stories to our legislator through the breakfast that we're having as an educational opportunity for them and to reinforce what our state Rivers Alliance is doing. Um, I, as Catherine said, they really respond to um, 
what's going on in their district. Um, and the more we're in front of them, the more that we can share stories with them that, that, that they're then able to share with their colleagues when they're sitting um, next to them in a committee or um, talking to them about trade-offs that they might make because everybody in the legislature is trading, right? It's like a big trading card thing. <laughs> everybody wants somebody to be on their uh, team and then you know everybody's trading off what they'll do for you. So the, again, the more that we advocate um, and give them the tools uh, to ask for what we want, um, the more likely it is that we'll get it. And I, I particularly think that having this legislative breakfast now as opposite the, the time of the lobby, uh, the lobby day that, that Mass Rivers does, this is really more about like we're at the time when the budget discussion is important. And that's why we focused a lot on, on asks, financial asks. Um, so I think it's really important for everybody to have a, a relationship with their legislator. I don't, you know, whether you're in a watershed or not, <laughs> these are, this is democracy. We see that it's in trouble. It's not in trouble if we can mobilize and really show how it can work. So that's my, my two cents. I have, I have a couple of cents. Uh, this was a long time ago and it, it wasn't really with watershed issues, but it was a, an aha moment for me in terms of how the political process works. Uh, I was an elected official in the town of Newtown, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, first Democrat to be elected to anything in 300 years there, rose to chair of the board. And most importantly, we had uh, no traffic savvy. We got some traffic savvy. We went to Washington. We had a bypass that had been partially built. I took a consultant and Barbara Sigmund, who was Hale Boggs' daughter and mayor of Princeton at the time, to Washington. And we testified before the Transportation Committee. We brought $1.5 million worth of land right away with us. And we got $12 million out of them to finish that bypass, which was had been identified as the one most critical element of our traffic plan that we had to implement. And we brought all of that with us and we came away with 12 million. And so the system does work. And uh, Catherine, you, you did an excellent job in, in how to approach the legislators because they are people too, uh, but forming a relationship is 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 really critical, and that's really why most of the legislators respond better to uh, a personal interview. So I'm a believer. Um, I'm a believer in providing not only information but evidence of partnerships because to me. That's the element that seems to be missing. Uh, single, single sourced groups, uh, groups that can't play nice with others, um, groups that can't play nice with themselves. All of that is such a, 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 an indicator of the importance of process and, not all, and, and people, you know, the two Ps for, for making things happen. So. Yeah, I'm a believer, and you know, thank you for summarizing it in a nice way for us, so that we can we can take that and, and use it with our legislators. I would just echo everything um, everybody has said, and I apologize, I've got a cold. Um, having worked on the other side and been one of those staffers, I can't tell you, um, I can't emphasize enough how much those personal stories. Um, are convincing. And, you know, my, the senator I worked for used to repeat some of those stories when they, you know, when they really resonated with him, he, he would repeat those, those stories when he met with Ways and Means, when he met with his colleagues. Um, so, uh, so they really do matter. And that, that why is very important, um, as Senator Feeney was emphasizing. I like that he had said, for advocates to lead with your heart, yeah. yeah, that was very nice. And I, I think sometimes um, if you are 
a member of the public or it's a new issue for you, no matter who you are, it can be a little intimidating to think, man, am I going to have all of the data? Am I going to have all the numbers? You might be nervous about having, you know, a deep expertise on a particular issue, but he's totally right. If you leave with your heart and just say, this is the issue I'm seeing it on the ground in my backyard, that is so convincing. And that's what's more important. Any other um, folks from the Watershed Action Alliance want to chime in and share some of your experience and expertise? Well, we don't, don't put you we don't have a lot of um, experience in Massachusetts as the other WA members do or have as much. Um, but from our work in Rhode Island, um, we found that it's it is a lot of it's about relationship building with legislators and lucky you all in mass you have a uh, staff of legislators that you can work with as well um in fact I, maybe some of the other WA members could speak to that you know the importance of um the role of staff um here in rhode island most legislators barely have an office let alone support staff i think it's different in mass but um i'd be interested in hearing that I, uh, oh, I didn't know that they don't I, have staff. Wow. Oh yeah, it's awful here. I just scored a meeting with Senator Moran, and I didn't have a, a particular uh, address for for her, Susan Moran. And so I I went on Facebook and dropped a message on Facebook. One of her staff picked it up, sent me a a note, and said, "Well, uh, Senator Moran cannot meet on the twenty third, but." can you meet sometime on the 28th? So I set up a Zoom meeting and we're going to meet. So, you know, that was that was done through staff. I mean, the staff is, mm -hmm. is extremely responsive in, in state. I mean, they're, they're fanatic about it. So, um, and, and Facebook, my God, I was worried about my, my, my email getting out there and getting all kinds of junk mail, but I said, what the heck? I get all kinds of junk mail anyhow, but that's what the junk mail files for. Yeah. Well, Don, I think you you touch upon um, you know something that that's so important that and we don't always um, take full advantage of it, and that's the the power of social media. You know, when we can use the power for good, it's it uh, it really is such a useful tool. And speaking of which, um, I'm hopeful that um, that you and some of the other uh, WA members will be able to stay after our meeting here um, concludes with Catherine so that we can strategize for best ways of, of um, spreading the good word of what the work that we've done here today. So, <laughs> um, I know that there's, um, Eve, you had invited several of your um, your students to be here today. I'm wondering if any of them have, have any questions. You've um, we've got they, a yeah they're all gone at this point oh, um the plan is to show this recording during my class time this afternoon so um and then Catherine I I asked her at the last minute to join our class for just about 10 minutes uh so she'll be doing that at the end of class today to just help us strategize but um the students you know I I teach at UMass so one of the great benefits of teaching at UMass is I have students from all over the state so, um, you know, I'm going to be asking Catherine if there are particular legislators and students' hometowns that we should um, address. It's, it's a class activity. So, you know, from my perspective, right, as a professor of this class, it's really about them learning how to do it. So between the 10 students, we may only hit up four legislators, but um, if they get an experience and, and those are strategic people, then that would be awesome. What, what do you, what class do you teach Eve? This is, it's called Rethinking U.S. Environmental Policy. I'm a geographer. Ah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, it was, it, I think it was brilliant getting children involved early. Uh, my wife's garden club is doing that and they're, they're going into the, now the third grade to talk about the, uh, the pine barrens and the kids, kids bring that home and oh. the parents say, Where, where'd you learn that? Well, we learned it at, or with a, a person who came in who was from a garden club and, oh, really? So they would take the tree, the, the little seedling that they were distributed and they would plant it outside. And it's, 
Topher, I, I'm excited about what, what you were talking about. The, 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 I, I know that there's a, um, on the Cape, there's a, a little school uh, in the Heritage Gardens that oh. is very, very uh, outdoor oriented. I mean, God, what a great idea Feeney came up came up with and, and, and promulgated. I mean, that would be something to take to the Plymouth school system or the Sharon school system or anybody as an, as an idea, who knows? It, it, it's, it's a great way to go. It's a great way to go. And Topher, thank you for that. I, you know, Catherine, the, the beauty of this group uh, that I've learned as, as its representative from Herring Ponds Watershed Association is that we swap ideas and there's some, some great things going on. Well, I wouldn't have thought of doing that. Well, yeah, and here's how we did it. I mean, I've, I've learned about the nitro um, uh, add-ons to the septic tanks from, from uh, Heather Rockwell. And she said, well, come on out and see it. And I've talked to Casey Chatelaine who, who gave that, that particular uh, report which she took us on a tour of the uh of the uh the cranberry bogs and i mean it it's just really a great venue to share information to share problems to share uh concerns it and uh otherwise we'd never know that that kind of stuff is out there or i wouldn't necessarily Thank you, Don. And um, Catherine, I'm, I'm wondering if um, if there was anything, any any other um, tips and tricks and hacks and and tidbits of information that you might be able to uh, to to close us off with before we um, wrap up this section of the program. Oh man, well, <laughs> there's so many experts in this room who have been in the game much longer than I, so I would definitely defer to everyone else, but. I think someone mentioned that it is it is budget season and um, their schedules right now are pretty packed between the budget and ARPA 2.0, which we still don't know exactly how that money is going to come out, whether it'll be part of the budget or like its own bill this session or next session. It remains vague to us, but that's cooking um, alongside the budget. They just did the capital budget. The SUP budget was weird. So there's so many things happening in the state house right now that um, I think it's it's amazing that you have both your legislative asks. You're also bringing up the budget and packing it into one meeting is really efficient. I think they appreciate advocates being efficient too and like just streamlining our, all of our asks. So I'm just so grateful for all of the work that you're doing. Like I said, the drought bill is our top legislative priority. This session um, and we are really active in budget advocacy for the uh, different line items that you've highlighted in your fact sheets so we are just so grateful that you all are, are having those meetings and bringing them up thank you Catherine and we're, we're very grateful to you for uh, for being here with us today um, and for for you know this is a very last minute addition to our program and I also wanted to thank um, you Eve for, for being the impetus for us to, to um, get this part of the program on the agenda. I think it's been a wonderful addition and, um, and I'm looking forward to hearing um, how, how your students, Eve, are able to learn from our experience here today and become the next generation of advocates um, at the State House. So thank you both very much. I could just say one thing. Nobody has said thank you to Wendy. In, oh, in, in, in a um, in a way proportionate to what she has done to pull this together. I mean, this is her first shot at us, her first shot at uh, a big organi organize organized thing like this. And uh, she has been very good at this. And I'm, I'm, I'm personally grateful. And I think I speak for everybody who's still here to say how much we appreciate all of the work you did, Wendy. Thank you, Don. Thank you, that means a lot. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Wendy. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm gonna- Herculean Oh, thank you, Carrie. <laughs> thank you. 
Um, so I'm going to stop the recording now for this section of the program, and um, and I uh, I ask that all the all the wasters hang on if you if you wouldn't mind for a few minutes afterwards. Um, and Catherine, you're welcome to join us too if you'd like. Um, but just wanted to thank you all again one more time, and um, we will see you soon. <laughs>